Hey everyone, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Gents from Nintendo Prime, and Prime Comments is back. I know we didn't have one last week. I apologize about that. Holiday weekend and all of that jazz, I decided I needed to take a little bit of a break. I kind of also took a break this weekend, because if you remember, we didn't have a video at all yesterday, uh, besides our 5J live streams. So I do want to apologize again uh, for a little slowdown in videos lately and not having Prime Comments last week. But we're back this week, and this is being kind of dubbed the response to haters episode although i do want to note that i don't actually think any of the people i bring up by uh username here uh actually hate me or hate my channel in fact one of them goes on to say that they love our love our content so uh, i just want to preface this by saying that despite the fact that we have a thing back there that says hi hater um i don't actually hate any of you guys uh, and I don't think any of you guys necessarily hate me. I'm sure there are people out there. Uh, but I have a feeling that when I respond here, uh, it's going to feel like I am being very, very passionate in terms of responding to haters' misconceptions about me or my opinions. But uh, whatever, let's get right into it. Uh, the first uh, thing I want to address isn't actually a comment. Uh, it's several comments, which is why I'm not going to actually uh, read all the comments. I'm just going to mention the video. Uh, this all comes from the Switch Pro Controller. Has a serious design fault, uh, causing grinding that impacts gameplay. Uh, and this is where I talked about. Uh, I don't even know if it's going to show up because I don't have the good lighting right now. Uh, but this talks about this problem here, where there's grinding on the inside specifically that is causing some catching of the controller here uh, that's impacting gameplay. Now, uh, many of you noted that obviously this hasn't happened to you. Uh, some said that this, because it's not happening to you, it must mean that I'm extremely hard on my sticks. And some of you were actually being nice and offering solutions uh, to fix this. I heard everything from taking apart the gamepad uh, and putting a clear pad, you know, a clear piece of tape uh, around the actual stick, uh, cutting one to size and putting that around makes it, you know, gets rid of the issue entirely. Uh, I heard people talk about, you know, taking isopropyl alcohol and cleaning it, uh, which I have done before, and it didn't work uh, as well as I wanted it to. Uh, to people just saying, hey, stop being so hard on your sticks. You know, pressing harder on your stick doesn't make your character move any faster, doesn't make you any better at Splatoon, blah, 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 blah. And there was a lot of comments along the lines of, essentially, there's not a design fault with the controller. It's 100% user error. Uh, we hate you. And we're going to go on and watch other YouTubers now because you clearly don't know what you're talking about. And this comes uh, with a heavy uh, like to dislike ratio uh, that is not favorable to our channel. Now, I addressed some of this in a live stream earlier. But since our live streams are only live to our patrons after the fact, uh, I wanted to talk about it again and just mention a few things here. Uh, a few misconceptions that might have been my fault because of the titling of the video or maybe I didn't explain it well enough. But my issue isn't that grinding happens. Uh, a grinding happens on this controller. This is my Xbox One controller that I have owned. Uh, not since launch, because uh, I did have a day one Xbox One, but this is one of the first uh, camo style controllers they released uh, within the first year, and I bought this as my second controller. I eventually sold my original Xbox One, rebought one, but I kept this controller. This controller has a lot more hours of use in it than this one. So, what I'm talking about is obviously the grinding, and this controller has grinded as well. I don't know how well it shows up on camera because, again, this isn't an ideal lighting situation to show this off, but I have grinding on every controller I've ever used in my life that has a joystick, uh, dating all the way back to probably the first joystick I ever used on the Nintendo 64, uh, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3. Uh, I have not uh, owned a PlayStation 4, so I can't uh, vouch for any grinding on that, but uh, there was the, obviously the GameCube, and uh, the Wii with the dongle attachment plus uh, the little uh, pro controller thing you could get. Uh, you, also the Wii U pro controller and the gamepad. Uh, the Wii U gamepad. And obviously this controller and even the Joy-Cons on the Switch itself. Which might be in the background up there on the wall. Um, I have had grinding on every controller I've ever had. I am not going to lie and say that I'm not hard on my sticks. I am hard on my sticks. Um, I know I'm hard on my sticks. But I've never worn out a controller. I've been gaming for, well, probably 25 years, but probably with joysticks for about 20 years. And the very first controller I ever used uh, that had joysticks was actually on PC back in the mid to late 90s, uh, playing Madden with joysticks. And uh, I 
played with that controller for about 10 years and it never wore out. In fact, the only reason I don't have it to show off right now is because um, I lost it. <laughs> well, being a kid, moving around, living at different places throughout my life, I, I just, I lost it. Uh, and since Xbox controllers work on PC, that's pretty much what I use on PC now is Xbox controllers. Actually, this Wii U Pro controller also works on PC. Um, but that's neither here nor there. The issue I have is obviously that it's affecting gameplay. It's it's getting caught. It's not staying stuck there. Some people reported in the comment section it's getting stuck there. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not getting it stuck, but I, I feel resistance and then sometimes an occasional uh, you know, two to three millimeter jump. And when that happens, it's obviously impacting uh, games, specifically if you're in twitchy gameplay, uh, whether maybe it's a fighting game or if you're in like Splatoon where that little twitch movement can actually affect your aiming and all of that jazz. Uh, it's obviously a problem I know not everyone's having, but I just want to emphasize that I've never had this happen on any controller my entire life. So as hard as I have them on my sticks, and I know I'm hard, there are people that are harder on their sticks than me, very clearly by some of the comments made in the video about how uh, they have had issues with this. And this controller itself, this particular one, is only two weeks old. And this is my second Pro Controller it's happened to. Uh, and if you actually, actually take apart the Pro Controller... What you'll notice, and I, I have still haven't taken it apart for you now, you can kind of feel it without taking it apart, but this plastic you feel like on top, it has, a, has a, this soft feel in the middle and then this kind of rubberized outside. That soft feel in the middle is basically uh, close to what the rest of the plastic on the stick feels like. So what they did is they used a softer plastic on the stick and then they still have this really rough, hard, sharp plastic on the outside. So what happens when you rub something hard and sharp against something soft obviously the soft thing grinds and gets kind of cut into and that's what's been happening and based on the comments for all the people that are saying that oh i'm wrong and i'm an idiot go read the other comments there are there are dozens upon dozens of people just in my video in my small fan base that are saying hey look this is happening to me hey mine's getting stuck hey mine's not getting stuck yet but the grind on it after a week is really really concerning um it's it's interesting to see the dynamic between the several examples of people saying, hell yeah, this actually happens, to the people who say, hey, because it has, the, hasn't happened to me, it's not a problem, it's your problem. Again, I've used dozens upon dozens of stick controllers in my life, and I've never worn them out, and I've never had them grind to the point of affecting gameplay. So that's why I say this is a design fault on Nintendo. Uh, the Wii U Pro Controller and the gamepad itself, not even the Joy-Cons, grind like this. So... Uh, this is obviously an issue specific to this controller and specific to the choice of plastics on the sticks. I don't know if these plastics are more expensive or cheaper. I have no idea, but uh, I assume cheaper since they're soft. I, I don't know. Obviously, I'm not, I'm not a, a plastician. I don't even know if it's a thing, but I don't make plastics. Um, but yeah, it's obviously an issue of soft plastic rubbing against hard plastic. And if you're someone like me that's you know hard on their sticks, you know some people might call this being hard on my stick. Um, that uh, you're going to experience that. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are experiencing way more grinding on this controller than you ever have before, even if it's not getting stuck. And that was kind of my point. Um, it's worse on this controller than it needs to be. And it's worse than it's ever been for a Nintendo controller. Save maybe the N64. The N64 didn't necessarily have the stick grind, but it had the, the, cheap, the cheap plastic mechanism underneath the stick that used to break, and that would cause you to have like that wobbly stick thing. And yeah, I, I didn't have that issue with mine. Uh, despite my heavy stick usage, but I know friends of mine that had it happen to uh, kind of a pain using those controllers. Anyways, let's move on to the next uh, video and comment. Uh, this next video we're going to talk about is about the Switch running into a quality control problem and Nintendo should fix it. Dealt with a mobile game uh, that was free to play coming out on Switch that cost like 10 bucks and still has all the microtransactions and all the stuff that made it a profitable venture as a free to play game. And uh, Gazenja Fox had this to say, Oh, bad pricing on a mobile port. This is a problem and is a sign more curation is needed from Nintendo, at least on pricing. But it's a long way from the asset flips or trophy slash achievement farms that the other non-mobile systems have. I think with GOG being the only exception I can think of uh, burying real releases. Though nothing about this screams that I need to have played it 10 million. I don't even know what they're talking about with that. But what I can say is uh, there are other people on here that said, oh, why are, you, why, why are you criticizing this because all other platforms do it? It's wrong for those platforms to do it too. PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, 
and every other platform holder out there or every other content providing platform should not allow mobile games that are free to play on phones to come as is exactly the same product on their systems and charge a significant chunk of change for it. Uh, imagine that you're playing this free to play microtransaction mobile game that's also the same price as Super Mario Run. That's what's happening. It's a free to play game on one platform, but it's that same game plus the price of Super Mario Run on Switch. That's a problem to me, and I it's not Nintendo's fault. Nintendo didn't choose the price. Nintendo didn't tell them to charge $10. I never blame Nintendo for choosing the price, or even Nintendo allowing this game to be on the platform. I have nothing wrong with mobile games coming to consoles. That is not what the, that video was about. My issue uh, is that I feel like someone needs to step up and say, look, you can't treat our customers like crap. Uh, and you need to treat them fairly with the other consumers, and I want Nintendo to do that, and I'm not going to apologize for wanting Nintendo to do that. Um, and I want to thank uh, Gazenja Fox for, for kind of understanding that this is actually a problem, uh, even though it's a problem that probably isn't going to get fixed like I want it to. Uh, it's still something I felt like addressing because... Things like this often don't get the attention they deserve. Just like there was a, actually a lot of people that thank me about talking about the grind on the controller because no one else was talking about it. Um, so the, when no one else talks about it, they think, oh, it's just me. When really it's a more common problem than you realize. Uh, even more common for some people than maybe even the issue, the one loan issue with the D-pad. Anyways, moving on. The next video we're going to talk about, or the next comment, uh, comes from the 2K says digital is the future of the gaming industry. So let's talk about it. A lot of people didn't like my opinions on that. Uh, and this comes from uh, Casual Gameplays. They said, for as long as I'm around, I will always advocate for physical copies. Oh, but digital is cheaper. Then why are they always more expensive than physical copies? Digital games never have price drops. You don't own anything besides a digital license. It's all BS. Um, you're wrong, for starters. Oftentimes, digital games are cheaper than physical games. In fact, digital games will have sales while the physical games aren't having sales, just like physical games will have sales when the digital games don't. Now, there is obviously issues where certain physical copies, like three months out, will drop to 20 bucks, but it's still $60 on the, on the shop. Uh, that's obviously a pricing discrepancy issue that needs to be resolved, but you're wrong. Uh, in fact, a big reason that PC gaming has blown up is there are many, many, many people out there that will argue, I'm not going to be one of them, but I've heard this argument many times, that PC gaming, despite how expensive it can be to... Say, say you invest $1,000 and you build a, a medium to high-end gaming rig. Um, they'll say that's really, really expensive compared to buying a $300 Nintendo Switch, but you could go hit a Steam sale, spend 10 bucks, and get 30 games. Uh, and that seems like a greater value than those same 30 games on the console side costing you hundreds of dollars. And they're not wrong. Um, I mean, Steam sales themselves have kind of not been as good as they used to be. Uh, and now sales at places like uh, Good Old Games and, and other outlets on the internet uh, even Origin, believe it or not, from EA is starting to have some really good sales. Uh, it's become one of those things where digital copies do sell cheaper than physical. It's even happening on Switch. Sometimes there'll be that Switch tax on the physical copy, but the digital copy will be the same price as other systems. So it's not even true what you're saying. Uh, now you could now you it is right that you know you're buying a digital license. Uh, it's actually funny. Um, that same digital license, if you actually read the fine print, it's basically the exact same license as the physical copy. The difference is that in countries that allow, uh, you know, resale of, of things you own, um, that license doesn't supersede your ability to sell that license to somebody else. Whereas online, uh, there's no, uh, common way to sell a license you own there are some outlets that allow you to resell a game a game license that you have uh some places online that let you uh move a license from one account to another account again it's not very common but it does exist and as soon as that becomes a more widespread thing that point on being able to get some value back on your game purchase is gone and obviously there's the whole point that a lot there, there's still a large part of the market that they just don't sell their games now i'm someone that's been selling games forever uh because i've been living on a budget and i just when i need cash the easiest quickest thing to sell is my video game collection and that sucks um i've even had to sell consoles because of that as well 
Uh, not fun, especially since you end up spending more money because you're going to rebuy that console later and ends up not being worth it. But it felt worth it at the time because you had more money later than you had now. Basically bad at budgeting. Bad, Nate. Bad at budgeting. Don't be me. Um, but yeah, uh, my general stance is obviously that the facts point out that digital is going to be the future. Uh, 76% of game sales in the United States are through digital already. Now, uh, that includes mobile games. Uh, that was as of 2016. It's probably even higher this year. But I, it, it's kind of a future. It's coming. Sometime in the next 20 to 40 years, uh, gaming is going to be like primarily digital uh, with some niche physical games still existing. Uh, kind of like vinyl. Someone brought up the example of, oh, yeah, that's why vinyl went away, right? Vinyl did go away, and now it's back as a niche overpriced product that's way more expensive than buying that music digitally. So, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's what physical games might become someday. Uh, but all digital futures coming. It's not here yet. I mean, even in Japan, uh, I think, like, in the month of October, Odyssey sold, like, 560-something thousand copies. Only 60,000 copies of that was digital. So, obviously, we're not there yet. There's still more physical games being sold than digital. But the digital rate is growing every year. And I think that's something we have to look at closely when talking about the future of video games is that physical game sales are shrinking while digital is growing. It's just when are we going to get to that equilibrium where they're at 50-50 and then suddenly, bam, digital just overtakes physical. Um, it's going to happen. The writing's on the wall for several different reasons. There's a lot of things pre preventing it from being a big deal yet. Uh, you could argue the size of the hard drives in the systems, internet speeds. Uh, the PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo eShop all limiting your connection when you're downloading. Um, all of that stuff that needs to be addressed. But again, this generation is not the generation that's going to do it. Next generation is probably not the generation that could do it. But a few generations from now, we could be talking about, hey, look, most of the games on this platform are delivered digitally. I mean, you could argue that now because of... Uh, because of indie games, but I, I mean in terms of AAA, there might eventually start being AAA games that only come out digitally. So, it's happening. Don't know when. I love physical copies, but it is what it is. And our last thing we're going to address today uh, comes from the Switch could have Final Fantasy XIV if Sony would allow crossplay. Now, before I get into this, I want to note that this comment is cherry-picked out of a long comment chain. Um that dealt with the Switch's, first off, the Switch's ability to run Final Fantasy XIV, the Switch's ability to um, have cross-play because the developers behind Final Fantasy XIV said they want to bring the game to Switch and they want to bring it to Xbox One. And the reason it's not happening is because they want to have cross-play between all versions of the game so the entire player base is connected um, and that uh, first-party studios are... Um, have policies in place that are preventing this from happening, which to me felt like an obvious shot at Sony, since Sony's the only first-party studio we know of publicly that has stated they are against crossplay, uh, even though, uh, and, and it could affect this game because this game launched on PlayStation 4 as like a console exclusive. So let, I'm going to get right into this comment. Um, I just want to get some context in case some things don't make a little sense when I'm reading it. And this comes from Chesser Chesser Hat. Uh, they say. I love how PC gamers say potato every time. I've been playing Final Fantasy XIV since before they fixed the game and completely revamped it years ago. But I won't waste my time since these so-called facts you made up against me, seeing as you don't have any proof of a single thing you said. I've created games for a living and built a few PCs for others as well. But I'm sure you'll just get upvotes simply because it's your Nintendo channel. Fact is, Sony isn't mentioned. Fact is, you're making excuses for Nintendo. And again, can't prove a thing you said about your gaming experience. Define what a fact is. Sorry, Nate. Everything I've said can and has been proven through the third-party games alone. Through all of the flamers and sheep will say otherwise. If anything negative about Nintendo is said, I'm staying here. Love your content. But the Nintendo bias and assumptions are just part of your charm, sir. Keep believing your facts, and I'll just let the actual text speak for itself, as it's done so far. And said person literally didn't say Sony, as you literally, please use the word correctly next time, said in this video 
that Sony was never clarified or mentioned. All right. So first off, I am going to apologize. I have a bad habit of using the word literally when it's not actually being used correctly. Uh, it's just when it's something that's an obvious connection. It's clearly what they are saying without saying it. Uh, so it's not literally. Uh, it, it's I, I got to find a better word. I got to find the word for whatever that is and start banging that into my vocabulary. So I do apologize for using the wrong terminology. Uh, but, you know, this is dealing with, uh, this is, first off, this entire debate that we had back and forth in the comment section dealt with uh, whether or not this game could run on Switch, whether or not it could support crossplay with Switch, uh, and whether or not uh, it would be a fun, playable experience. And, like, when you call out my gaming, you know, my gaming experience and define what a fact is, um, I, you were calling into question when I talked about how I used to raid in World of Warcraft 40-man raids playing 1 FPS. If you want me to back that up, I can go ahead and get people to come on here that I used to raid with. Um, I can go ahead and get... Um, I think I, I might even uh, have some old... Now, this was when I had a slightly better computer, but it was still raiding at, like, sub-20 FPS... Uh, there's some old Shaded by Oblivion videos out there um, that show me, because uh, I recorded them. I, I could probably look them up on YouTube somewhere. Cause I, used to ha I used to run the Shaded by Oblivion, uh, our, our guild's website and YouTube channel. Uh, there are some videos out there. I had better, a little bit better specs than that was back when, uh, that was after Vanilla. That might have been the Burning Crusade or, uh, oh man, I can't, I can't believe it. I'm even drawing a blank on what the second expansion pack was. Um, but the point is, is that obviously I can't go back and literally prove everything that I said. And I hope I'm using the word correctly there because I said, I can't prove everything about my gaming experience back then because I was young and wasn't obviously recording my game, my gameplay while I was playing when I could only get one FPS in the game. Um, but when, when you like, here's what you say, um, just going over that part, uh, but I won't waste my time since the so-called facts that I made up, which are really weird because I didn't make up anything, are against me as you don't have any proof of a single thing you said. Um, and then you claim you've created games for a living, provided no proof that you've created games for a living. Um, that you've built a few PCs for others as well, didn't provide any proof that you built PCs for other people. I can provide proof that I built the PC myself. This rig right over here that might be slightly off camera, there's a live stream of it up on this channel of me building that computer. So I, I, I can prove I build computers. I can prove I built a computer. Uh, I can prove that I still build computers for other people. Uh, but I have proof that's live on the internet for that. You're just saying you do it. So here's the thing. You say these so-called facts that I'm making up, I can't prove because I'm just saying they happened. You're just saying this stuff happened. I'm not doubting that you've made games. I'm not doubting that you've built PCs. Lots of people build PCs. Lots of people program and, and create games. Um, I'm not even calling you a liar here. I'm just saying that you're providing the same amount of evidence for uh, what you do as I provided for what I did. As in, you didn't provide any evidence. You're just saying you did it. Can't you see how that's the same argument? If you're going to call out my facts and say I have no proof or evidence, you can't just then say you have done X and provide no proof or evidence. It's, it's just a bad way of arguing if you're going to try to say, what I'm saying is not true because I didn't provide proof or evidence, but then what you're saying is true without providing proof or evidence. You see what I mean? It starts to become this straw man argument that uh, is, is just silly. If you're going to try to debunk me and say things like this, provide the evidence that you're saying I don't provide. Um, but anyways, moving beyond that, uh, it says, I'll still get upvotes because, uh, it's your Nintendo channel, which I mean, I think that's generally true. People who really, really love my channel are just going to like every comment I make. It's just the way it is. Um, so I'm not even going to argue about that point. You see this on other channels as well. Uh, but it says the fact is Sony isn't mentioned, which is true. Sony's not mentioned. Uh, fact is I'm making excuses for Nintendo. Here's the weird thing. This isn't even about Nintendo. <laughs> That's the weird thing. None of this is about Nintendo. This is about some folks at Square Enix who said they want to bring this game to Switch. They want to bring this game to Xbox One. They want to do it, and they can't because of first-party policies. 
And that first party policy being that there's certain companies that won't allow crossplay, and there's only one company right now, one first party company that doesn't allow crossplay. You connect the dots there and tell me it's not Sony. Um, so yes, they don't literally mention Sony because they are on that platform. And I said in that video, they're not going to throw Sony under the bus, but that is what they're saying. They are saying that a first party studio, or they, they say studios, uh, policies need to change to allow crossplay. And there's only one company not allowing crossplay. So I, I'm not going to, that's a fact. The fact is one first party company isn't allowing crossplay. They said it's because of first party policies on crossplay. It's Sony. That's why I titled it Sony. They are saying Sony without saying Sony. Uh, because obviously they're, they're trying not to throw them under the bus, but they basically are throwing them under the bus. If you, if you don't, don't be stupid. Connect the dots. Use your brain here. Um, this isn't even about Nintendo. That's what's so weird. None of this is about Nintendo. Um, this is them saying they can bring it to Switch. Them saying they can bring it to Xbox One. They are saying that. I'm just saying that Sony is one of the is basically the primary reason it's not happening because of their crossplay stuff that they also said. Did they say Sony by name? No, but they are the only studio or the only first party company factually, as you like to say, factually blocking crossplay. What am, where am I wrong? Those are facts as well. Anyways, um, so anyway, you go on to say everything that you said can be proven through third-party games. And a lot of, to be fair to what you said, you said a lot of games uh, don't work with cross-play uh, between PC and consoles because of X, Y, and Z. Um, ignoring the examples I gave where cross-play does exist between PC and consoles because cross-play does exist between PCs. I mean, cross-play exists between certain PS4 games and PCs. In fact, Final Fantasy XIV has cross-play between PlayStation 4, even the OG PlayStation 4, and PCs still to this day. Um, I know you made a point about the game running on PlayStation 3 and why it kind of forced people over to PlayStation 4, and I understand that you yourself cannot see a possible way Final Fantasy XIV can run on Switch at an acceptable level for cross-play. And I understand that. I'm not doubting your experience with the game, even though you can't prove your experience with the game. Just like you're asking me to prove my experience with World of Warcraft, uh, you're, you, you literally can't prove your experience here with Final Fantasy XIV either. Uh, when you say you played it here, you played it there, you think it's unplayable here, unplayable there. And the thing is, like frame rate wise, there's lots of different variables in, in playability. Uh, some people find 20 FPS playable. Some people won't, don't find anything under 100 FPS playable. Ew, anyways, um, the point I was making here is that this isn't your your passionate responses are because you personally don't see how Final Fantasy 14 can run on Switch at an acceptable level to, to have crossplay. My point was that the developers said they want to, they want to put it on Switch and Xbox One with crossplay. So you might not see a way that can be done, but the people behind the game are saying they see a way it can be done. So you are just doubting them, not me. That's why I don't get why you're hating on me about it. Um, as for uh, you saying, uh, but Nintendo bias and assumptions are just part of my charm. I'm not going to say I don't have any bias. I obviously do. I'm Nintendo Prime. There, there's going to be bias towards the company. But I got to say that I hate on Nintendo a lot. And not hate, I attack Nintendo uh, for things they do really, really stupid. I have chastised them over things like their voice chat app. I have killed them for what they did with Wii U. Um, I was not happy with certain things they did with 3DS. Um, I wasn't happy with certain things they did with Wii. I went after certain design choices and decisions in different games they have made. Uh, more recently, I was just getting killed for going after them about the dang Pro Controller. Um, I, I criticize the hell out of Nintendo because I want them to be the best version of themselves. And while that doesn't make me unbiased, it I think it opens my mind because I am not. I, it, it's almost my fault if I didn't if I didn't name if I just named this channel Gaming Prime instead of Nint Nintendo Prime. One, I wouldn't have painted myself into a corner. And two, uh, maybe you wouldn't think I'm so as biased as I am. You are looking at the name Nintendo Prime. And saying, hey, that that look at the name of your channel. You clearly are super biased. I'm primarily a PC gamer. I'm a PC gamer first and foremost. I play uh, when my Xbox One is here, which it's not. It's in the repair shop. When my Xbox One is here, I play more on my Xbox One than I do on a Nintendo system. Uh, before I launched this channel, I barely played Nintendo games if they weren't Zelda. Um, it, it's... 
it, it, Nintendo's been kind of my least played system over the years, is basically what I'm saying. Um, so it, it's really weird when people are call me biased because I have this passion for this company that I want to be as good as other companies' stuff that I enjoy. Um, but yeah, in this case, I, I'm not I'm really going to apologize for much that I said unless I... Uh, I don't think I did any personal insults to you. I hope not. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. I warned you guys. <laughs> I warned everyone. Hi, hater. Again, this person doesn't hate me, but if I knew it was going to end feeling like this was a hater episode. Anyways, folks, I am Nintendo Robojets from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. If you would like to get cool merch like this shirt or that notebook or... Uh, this cup right here, uh, you can go down to the uh, description below and there'll be links to some of that merchandise you can check out for yourself. Uh, this cup is actually really nice. It's steel, um, dishwasher safe and all that. Uh, th this notebook here is hardcover. Uh, look at that, you know, blank paper inside. So this, this is really good for uh, people who like to doodle or draw. Uh, and even for people who are looking for more uh, like note taking and stuff, uh, they do have this soft cover kind of planner style with the with the ring binder, uh, and that's got lines. And you'll see the I have podcast notes in here from a few episodes, and yeah, comes in handy. But of course, so does any notebook. You don't have to get the Nintendo Prime one. I more so made that for me, not not so much for you to buy it. But if you want to buy it, you know, I guess there's stickers and a whole bunch of shirts and sweatshirts and blah blah blah, lots of stuff. Uh, you can also check us out at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. Uh, we just, just like the other day, hit our $300 goal, which means we're starting game reviews in January. I'm really, really excited to see what game uh, people pick for us to review in January. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Hopefully it's a game that comes out in January. I haven't decided if I'm going to make it the game has to come out that month or if it could be a game, any game, um, uh, at least on Switch, because that's the only Nintendo system I own right now. But All right, folks. I think I've extended this video long enough. <laughs> oh, I'll catch you in the next one.